see one of the most key teachings in this work is the impossibility of change must strike you nobody can change how can you change how can jealousy become non jealousy how can anger become love nothing is possible you're just wasting your time trying to become something which you can never become it's impossible you cannot change and this must strike you like a ton of bricks then what happens then suppose there is a gunda in your street where you're living and you can't fight him what would you do is a terrible fellow and you don't have the strength nor the contacts nor the influence to fight him what would you do make friends with him that's all buy a few coconuts some garlands put it on him fall at his feet and say so nice he too is pleased that he won't trouble you the same thing with your fear with your anger with your jealousy with your hatred they are there they have been there from time immemorial what is there is just the one mind not your mind his mind or her mind that is the human mind it's ancient so the day he was chased by a wild boar he dealt fear and the fear continues to this day so everything is there in you you think uh, it is your fear like saying this my tb that his tb tb is tb that's all it can't be your tb or his tb so similarly it is not your fear or my fear or his fear no it is fear it is anger it is jealousy these are properties of the human mind and you can't do anything with them so once you realize there is nothing you could do about them you become friends with them they are just there and the strangest thing is once you made friends with them like the gunda who would not trouble you anymore because you made friends with him they also don't trouble you they are there you are there that's all no problem but if you start running away from him or start fighting with him then he gives trouble and you can't win against your jealousy or your hatred you will be the loser you may control it but you may become sick there's no way you can do anything about it. they are just there it's like breathing like your digestive system like your immune system it is just there that's all let them be there's no problem even when you are enlightened sometimes when there's uh, anger or something like that the enlightenment will not bother with that you know it is there that's why we say your thoughts are not your thoughts you are wearing those nice shirts and trousers did you design them did you tailor them did you uh, go the cotton which is gone to that and yet you say the gentleman would say this is my shirt <laughs> how could it be your shirt so you don't want anything at all these thoughts have evolved over millions of years they are there in our collective consciousness it is there and they taken millions of years to evolve you did not create them the thoughts are traveling you live in a thought sphere they are not your thoughts so anger may suddenly come jealousy may come anything may come let them come so what as a river is flowing by carrying a dead corpse the ganges all kinds of things are floating in the river so it keeps floating and you keep witnessing that's all even when you are awakened when you are enlightened all these thoughts will be traveling there are times when there are no thoughts and there are times when there are thoughts but you have nothing to do with them they are just coming they go the only difference is you will be pursuing those thoughts you will be running after those thoughts the enlightened man would not pursue them they came they went ready for the next one that's all you are not doing that you keep chasing them so all these things are very beautiful to hear but unless we awaken your kundalini and activate your chakras they have to rotate at a particular speed they are like switches to the brain each chakra controls a particular part of the brain so as we activate this that part of the brain is activated or it is toned down ours is neurobiological work we work directly on the brain through the chakras and using kundalini in the university of pennsylvania they've been working on the brain and they have found that uh, even uh, years of meditation don't open up some parts of the brain but a single diksha can open up those parts of the brain just a single diksha <laughs> so that is how uh, it works so that's why we hope that after 2012 things may start moving fast and we are already preparing you and thus we can contribute to mankind otherwise man would destroy himself